Hello, this is our third lecture on manufacturing of silicon based solar cells. So the steps that we are going to discuss here are the steps after surface texturing and acidic cleaning. Okay, so this is the fourth step, which is known as the emitter diffusion. And why we are doing it, we are doing this to create the PN junction. So as you can understand, this is a very important step. In fact, probably the most important step for us because this is directly related to the scientific principles and therefore of our, uh, the performance of our solar cells. Okay, so I must have mentioned this before that our starting wafer in industrial processes is a P-doped wafer. Mm. P-doped wafer means it is doped with boron. Now what we need, we need an N-doped wafer or a layer of N-type silicon material. So what we do is we take the same P-doped wafer and try to diffuse some uh, phosphorus containing material. So phosphorus is the uh, precursor for N-doping. So we try to diffuse some phosphorus atoms into it from the top. So now we have in the P-layer, on top of that we have a little N-layer and we already have the P-N junction created this way. Okay, now some of the common precursors for phosphorus are, and they are shown on the screen, they are phosphoric acid or POCl3 or phosphorus pentoxide. Hmm. Now, how do we conduct this? How do we carry out this process? First of all, we need certain junction depths. We need 0.2 to 1 micrometer of, of the depth of the junction. And what we need is also, there is a, you know, a kind of well-defined concentration that we need which is defined by the number of atoms of the uh, dopant per cubic centimeter. So now we need to have a very controlled process because this is what we want, not more, not less. Mm. Fine. Now what we do, first of all, we let's start with a solid state process. We have a powder of P2O5 and we can mix it into uh, some liquid, some solvent or some carrier, let's say, and we can make a paste or we can directly take POCl3 which is, a, which is in liquid form. Why liquid? Because liquid is easy to coat onto any surface. More uniformly, we can uh, make a coating of a liquid. Okay, so what we do now is we uh, take this P2O5 or uh, POCl3 and we do spin coating. What is spin coating? You take a couple of drops, a, a couple of milliliters of any uh, solution or um, solvent for that matter, anything, and then you place it on top of your wafer and you spin the wafer at say 3000 rpm. So at very high speeds you spin your wafer. So wafer is attached to uh, you know attached by vacuum to a certain holder so it does not fall and it can spin at very high rotation speeds. This process is known as the spin coating. Now what that does is whatever is your paste or liquid that will now be completely spread onto your wafer. So we can do that which is your solid or liquid state process now once you have the layer of phosphorus containing material will it directly diffuse the phosphorus atoms into your um, silicon wafer well maybe extremely few but in order to have more diffusion what we need is certain higher temperature hmm. so what we do is this is what is known as the thermal diffusion so what we do is we place this entire wafer containing the uh, the layer of your dopant and then you Put it inside a furnace for one hour at 800 to 900 degrees centigrade. Okay. Now, where is this phosphorus coming from? The atoms that are diffusing? Well, the reaction is shown on the screen. What you have is this phosphorus pentoxide reacting with some silicon atoms and producing then phosphorus atoms, which because of the high temperature diffuse into the silicon wafer. Okay, so this was one method. This was the solid state or liquid state diffusion. Now, can we also use a gaseous precursor? Because for a lot of things you've seen in the in the past couple of uh, lectures, that we can do doping using gaseous precursor, precursors. And in fact, gases allow for a better control of the you know concentration. So we can also perform that. For this purpose, you will need to use a two stage process. So the one that we previously discussed, this was a one stage process. So you apply something onto your silicon wafer, put it in the furnace and have diffusion takes place. Here you will have two stages. The first stage will be known as the pre-deposition stage. So here you will take POCl3 as your precursor material and you evaporate it 
use bubbling the nitrogen gas in the presence of oxygen gas hmm. so now this is your step number one what it does is well two things one is that because you have some oxygen present you will have a new compound form that is known as phosphosilicate glass what is glass in general glass is silicon dioxide mostly hmm. and when your silicon dioxide is kind of not contaminated but you also have sort of doping of phosphorus in it when it contains phosphorus you call it phosphosilicate glass hmm. so now this phosphosilicate glass as well as some pocl3 attaches onto the silicon wafer surface so here is the reaction first you have the pocl3 liquid form nitrogen bubbles and then you have the vapor of pocl3 which will also attach to your silicon wafer and some phosphosilicate glass as well hmm. now this pocl3 can further react with oxygen and produce some phosphorus pentoxide as well so now you can also have some little bit of phosphorus pento pentoxide onto your silicon wafer surface so all of these things are are your dopants because they all contain phosphorus hmm. and now what you do is you do the second step which is nothing but the thermal diffusion so in the second step now it is called the drive in step it is now you increase the temperature hmm. and now you also have oxygen environment and this dopant which is on the surface or which was on the surface now redistributes into your silicon goes inside your silicon material so that is known as the drive in process it is called drive in because in the industrial processes you will have what is known as a belt furnace so you put your silicon wafer onto a belt like a conveyor belt and it goes inside the heated chamber so that is your furnace stays there for about an hour and then comes out so that is sort of a drive in process okay now here as i mentioned before this phosphosilicate glass may also act as a dopant okay now in order to control this process you can control two primary parameters one is the temperature and the second one is the concentration of the dopant okay now this phosphosilicate glass okay it's a good thing it was formed but we also need to get rid of it at some point Hmm. there are different different types of silicon wafers different types of uh, you know junction depths that you need to create huh? and sometimes you may want a lot of you you know a larger junction depth sometimes narrow junction depth now when you have psg or phosphosilicate glass it causes a shallow junction depth hmm. but higher surface concentration of the dopant so you have to see whether you want it or you don't want it after the doping however you want to get rid of the psg layer so that brings us to the next step of our manufacturing process which is the step 5 known as the phosphosilicate glass removal so this is typically very simple you take um, an acid known as the hydrofluoric acid this is the most common process 1 to 5% hydrofluoric acid can actually etch away your phosphosilicate glass okay now in some industrial processes after all this you may also grow a thermal oxide for production uh, for the protection but to be honest this is not very commonly used in industrial scale but rather for research purposes you can also grow a thermal oxide in order to protect your your wafer after all of this process 